the Easter season is always a time to celebrate within the Christian faith. And today we are celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to take you right back to the New Testament, to Matthew's Gospel, Luke, Mark, and even John, and make references to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a known fact that uh, in the beginning of the birth and the growth of the early church, there were people who could not believe or come to grips with the fact that Jesus was buried in a grave and after three days in the tomb, he arose again. The early Christians, some of them and the Jews, had a real difficult time trying to get that wrapped around their mode of thought. Even Thomas, who was one of Christ's disciples, he witnessed many miracles at the hand of Jesus. And yet Thomas failed, for lack of faith, I suppose, to totally embrace the miracle of the resurrection of the Lord. John tells us in his gospel that when the resurrected Christ appeared to his disciples, Thomas was not with them. There were 10 of them and there was Jesus. And Jesus said to the disciples, peace be with you. Well, the Bible says that the disciples were overjoyed and why not? Their Christ had risen from the dead. And sometime later, when the disciples were together, they had explained to Thomas, who was not present, of course, for the first gathering, they had explained to Thomas that Christ was alive, and they stated to Thomas quite emphatically, we have seen the Lord. Now, you can imagine the excitement on the part of the disciples in explaining to their friend that, yes, indeed, we have seen Jesus. Jesus is alive. Jesus is in good health. Thomas, we have seen him. We have seen the Lord. I guess their hearts probably melted a little in fear and disappointment when their fellow disciple replied with what I would call some scathing words. He said, unless I see the nail prints in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, then I will not believe. Well, let's not from the very beginning jump all over Thomas with words of condemnation. We must understand that at that particular time, particularly in Jewish custom, sign-seeking was rather common. And Thomas said, unless I see and unless I touch, I cannot believe. For instance, in Matthew 12 and 38, the Bible says, Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a miraculous sign from you, because that was a part of their culture. In Luke 11 and 16, the Bible says, others tested Jesus by asking for a sign from heaven. In John 2 and 18, the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all these things? And then Jesus himself said of the Jews, unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, you will never believe. Wow. So it was not unusual for somebody like Thomas to say, I want to see and I want to touch in order for me to believe. The fact that Thomas doubted doesn't make Thomas a bad person. I mean, come on. Jesus hung on a cross for hours. He died in the heat of the day. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And now after three days, he is alive. 
Jesus didn't give up on Thomas. In fact, it was a week later when Jesus came again and met with his disciples and Thomas was present. And here's what happened when Jesus came where Thomas was. Jesus said, peace be with you. These must have been comforting words to the disciples. And he said directly to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas, bless his heart, had reached out his hand. He had seen the nail prints. He had touched the, the hand of Jesus. And he said from his heart, my Lord and my God. He believed finally that Jesus was more than a conqueror and that he had broken the bondage of the sepulcher. And Jesus said to him, I love these words. He said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. It is so important today that you and I, particularly you are of the Christian faith, that we revisit our place of hope. And though the cross was absolutely magnificent, and because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, our sins have been forgiven when we come to him by faith. But if the tomb had not been emptied, then everything would have been for naught. And so to visit the tomb by the eye of faith is to visit our place of hope as born-again Christians. The Word of God says in Romans 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, I know it's difficult more than 2,000 years later for you and I by faith to accept the fact that he rose from the grave. It is pivotal that we believe that in order to come into a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. This Easter Sunday morning is a time to celebrate. Amen. Everything hinges on the certainty of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, some people in the church at Corinth that Paul was instrumental in helping set up and organize and do a lot of teaching and preaching there, there were people within the church who were actually teaching that Christ had not risen from the dead. And, and many of them did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so Paul comes to the defense of the gospel. And Paul says, For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised from the dead. In other words, if you are teaching in your little circles that there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ himself has not been raised. Now, that's, that's really difficult for the Christian faith because Paul went on to explain to the Corinthian Christians that if Christ is not raised from the dead, he said, your faith is futile. Then he went on to say, if Christ had not risen from the dead, you are still in your sin. And, he said, those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. Wow. Can you imagine our faith is almost baseless without the certainty and the understanding that our Savior is indeed alive? And Paul kind of finished his narrative here by saying to the Corinthian Christians, if only for this life we have opened Christ, then we are to be pitied more than all men. And so today, as we revisit that 
pivotal place, that empty sepulcher. It renews our faith. It encourages our heart. It helps us to walk by faith and not by sight and say with Thomas of old, my Lord and my God. Ladies and gentlemen, to revisit the tomb where Jesus lay for three days is to revisit our place of hope. I want to read just a few scriptures here from Matthew's gospel. It's a beautiful story, and every time I read it, it just blesses my heart, and trust it will bless you today. Reading from Matthew chapter 28. And after the Sabbath, at the dawn of, of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and he sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, praise the Lord. He is risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. Go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. And so the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet they were filled with joy. And they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. Greetings. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. And then Jesus said, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There you will see him. Ladies and gentlemen, on this Easter Sunday morning, let's revisit the place of our hope, the empty tomb, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have yourselves an awesome day. Love each other. Embrace your loved ones. And until next time, God blessings. Amen. Take care. Bye.